Okay, I've had uh, a number of comments, questions, saying that uh, why don't I cook <laughs> when I'm camping out? Well, I don't cook a lot. Um, I'm usually running around uh, visiting places, checking out uh, attractions and things like that. So a lot of times we just eat on the road. Um, and even when I come back late from hiking or uh, exploring or, or checking out some a, a tourist attraction, um, usually I just heat up something that I cooked at home that uh, I made in um, it's like a stew or a chili or a spaghetti or something like that that can be easily heated up. I also eat uh, a lot of uh, dehydrated foods, mountain house uh, backpacker meals. I keep those because they're real easy. You just throw boiling water in them in, uh, in 20 minutes. They're super good. They're just full of salt. They're usually, they're usually about 50% of your salt intake. But if you're hiking and sweating, and, and uh, you might need that anyways. So, but one meal I love to do and I love to eat is uh, pancakes and sausage. It's just uh, it's a, my it, it goes back for a thousand years in my uh, DNA for uh, camping out and having a great meal. Um, you can cook it on a fire. You can cook it on a stove. Today I'm going to cook it on the. On the A-Liner original stove, this is the indoor-outdoor stove. There's a ton of people on the A-Liner forums and places that say they threw this out and got a regular Coleman stove. And I'll tell you why, um, because they didn't know how to use it, but it's a great stove. I love it. And it, of course, it came with the trailer free. I got the peanut gallery over in the woods here yelling at me. But anyways, the first thing about this stove that people don't know about or maybe they find out about pretty soon. Is it you? Know, you open it up, and it has these wings that come out to keep the wind from blowing. And they really don't have any place to set. You can set them like that, but all you need to do is like nudge them once, and they'll they'll be flapping in the wind, and they'll be falling off. Now, the Coleman stove has a a guide here that keeps it from you know you can you can move these way out like this but when you move these way out it closes so all I did is is I took a nail just a regular six penny nail drilled a hole in in here and I just stick the stick the nail through so it can't fall off and I can, I can put these quite a ways out. I can put those way out so that they block the wind and uh, I got a nice wide cooking area. The other thing, of course, with this stove is it, it doesn't have an igniter. Um, some of the new modern stoves have an igniter. I don't know if the newer models might have an igniter. This is obviously is a 2008. So you got to have a, a match or a... Uh, lighter of some sort to, to light the stove. The other thing people complain about this stove is they can't get it to hook up. <laughs> this is the gas line. It goes into this little receptacle down here. It's a nicely hidden. It's, it's just behind the wheel so it gets a little muddy and dirty. So the, the trick to making this easy to go in there is first of all the gas has to be turned off. If you've got there's a little excuse me <laughs> I'm doing something. Get if the gas is on, you've got pressure in here and you can't push this thing in against that pressure. So um, make sure the gas is off, the little lever is, is, is pointing down. And this will go right in there. If it doesn't, you, you could spray a little WD-40 in there and let it uh, evaporate out. Don't, don't try to run it that day, but you know when you're done with your camping, spray a little WD-40 in there and it, it'll be nice. But you have to stroke this thing back stroke the collar back and just push this in here and then pull the collar forward and it'll click and this is ready to go. It ain't going anywhere and it won't leak. That's the same type of a connection that's inside under the, uh, the bench. One other thing about this stove, you have this nice little tray here for stuff, but if you leave it on the side of the, 
the camper like I do and if you leave it open when it rains it's gonna fill up with water so do yourself a favor and drill a hole in this thing down at the bottom it all drains down here so that both the inside of this will drain and this will drain because it's a double wall you can see that just a just a regular hole that goes all the way through <laughs> it'll make life easier too the, the stove is plugged in it's set up the propane's turned on at the front of the trailer. The propane's turned on underneath the trailer. We'll turn the propane on here. You can hear it coming out. These are an essential unit on these trailers. You should have at least three of these. And it lights fine. It's a wonderful stove. So now that we got the stove all working and ready, now we're ready to mix up the mix to make the pancakes. We won't leave this running, we'll turn it off. The most important thing for me is to assemble all the ingredients at once. Um, and, and make sure I've got plates to eat them on, although I've eaten them out of the pan when the plates run out. Um, I use paper plates, they don't need to be washed. Gotta be butter, you can't have, <laughs> you can't have good cooking without butter. Um, this is my mixing bowl. This is, if you've never seen these, if you go to into a grocery store or someplace and they have a food bar, usually they'll have these for soup or, or for uh, salads or something like that. These are called a food container. They're paper. They burn really well. Uh, my prior company used to make these and I used to get them by the case. And they were great for, for using them on the trail for mixing things and stuff, but I can't get them anymore because I don't work for the company anymore and I don't think you can buy these. All right, so we, I got one egg. Now, the pancake mix I buy is a complete pancake mix. It's got all the egg and milk and everything in it, but I like to put an egg, an extra egg in it because it keeps it from turning into dust when you put syrup and stuff in it. And um, this is my secret pancake mix that I buy. It's called New Hope Mills. And it's from a little uh, mill that used to be um, 20 miles from my house in the middle of the Finger Lakes. It uh, was really kind of a little old fashioned mill and they had buckwheat pancake mix, which was kind of like a real buckwheat pancake mix. So. Um, and it was always complete and it was always the best pancake mix I could find and uh, it, 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 they moved the They moved the whole operation to Auburn, New York And I thought when I moved down here it was gone, but I, I did find it on Amazon for a pretty decent price But I also found out that every Amish store sells that pancake mix so um, Now I can actually buy it uh, right up the street from my office at a little Amish store that's up there. And uh, I usually put this, I usually measure this out in a plastic bag so it makes enough for two people. So I've got leftover here. Um, put that in there. Um, I also bring real maple syrup from Dutch Hill Farms um, in Tully, New York. <laughs> It's real, uh, uh, real light amber maple syrup. You gotta have a spatula. You can't make pancakes without a spatula, and you need a, a, a no-stick pan to put them in. And it should be fairly clean, which this one is fairly. Clean. So the mix goes in there. The egg goes in there. So it doesn't mess up the table and then we'll put it in the garbage in a minute and a little bit of water um, usually I would use milk but I'm giving up milk for fatness <laughs> so and I just stir this up until it's nice and smooth now if I was home I would put raisins or cranberries or um, walnuts or pecans or a whole bunch of other things in here actually you know what 
there are walnuts in my mix. There are walnuts and raisins. They're crazy. Walnuts and cranberries are in my mix. You can see the... So this is awesome. <laughs> I, I made this mix up probably six months ago and I forgot I put all that stuff in there. So this is going to be really good food. All right. I'm ready to go. Let's get back to the stove. Wait a little while for that. There goes my eyebrows. I got a little pancake flour in there. It's all right. If you don't mind that. And anybody that knows, knows that I always cook with butter because it just tells me how hot the pan is. When the butter begins to brown, it means the pan's hot enough to cook, to cook something in it. Um, you can't do that with oil, especially not Pam, which is just oil in a spray can. So, we'll let that heat up a minute. And we'll put the, uh, we'll put the butter back on the table for the pancakes when they're done. Okay, the butter has browned. So we add the pancake. And generally speaking, because I'm really lazy, I usually make just one pancake. So it's one pancake. I don't need to fart with it. I just cook it. I'll turn the fire way down because the pan has got plenty of heat at this point. We'll probably burn the bottom because that's what I do. Yeah. Flip it over. Perfect looking pancake. Huh? So we'll let this cook for a couple more seconds. Flip it one more time. And then we'll be meeting you at the table to eat it. All right, so we'll meet you at the table. Now, we could dirty a knife and spread some butter on the pancake, but that would be just wasteful. So we just do this. <laughs> we just take the stick of butter and rub it on the pancake. Slowly, it melts it. It's not a weird pancake. Oh, this pancake smells delicious. This, I did not realize that I had put the pancake mix all mixed up the way I make them at home with cinnamon and walnuts and cranberries. This is just so, this is just an awesome breakfast. That's all I can say. And you can see the sad one in the background there. He, he wishes he was over here eating this. He hates being tied up. Um, and we have our tea to go with it. If, if you ever invite me to breakfast or dinner, I drink tea, not coffee. Although I'd love to have somebody teach me how to enjoy coffee. <laughs> I have had coffee a few times and it just doesn't do it for me. All right, so, and now we go for the maple syrup. Bon appetit! This is awesome. Mmm! Mmm! Ooh, that's so good. Alright folks, I'm gonna eat this. I chew funny, I look funny, I drool all over myself. I'm gonna catch you on the next video. If you like this, subscribe, share, give me a thumbs up. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by.